While there have been obvious gaps in education in the past, the coronavirus pandemic has become the spotlight as one of the significant problems that have not been resolved until now. Since early March, universities and schools across the country have been closed after President Rodrigo Duterte declared a state of public health emergency due to the increasing number of confirmed cases of the coronavirus disease. Now, seven months later, the Philippines has a whopping total of 361,000 cases, ranking 18th in the most number of cases worldwide. Schools remain closed, and this pandemic has caused a massive shift to distance learning and online education. As schools attempt to continue the pursuit of education amidst the pandemic, the question lies on whether education is accessible to all and the quality of education stays the same. On October 5, 2020, the school year opened for public schools nationwide. It welcomed 24.6 million students to unfamiliar modes of learning, which have been set due to the coronavirus pandemic. This number of students is just 80% of last year's enrollees. The remaining 20% are Filipino children who are out of school due to the lack of access to the digital age in education, to work for their family who has lost their jobs, and to be safe given the fear of contracting the virus. The Department of Education, through its Learning Continuity Plan, has shifted the Philippine education to different types of learning delivery options. Face-to-face, -face, blended learnings, distance learnings, homeschooling, and other modes of delivery. However, because of the still increasing number of positive COVID-19 cases nationwide, no face-to-face -face classes have been conducted. Instead, blended learning through the internet, radio, and television are being utilized as a means of instruction in addition to modular or distance learning. A survey showed that more than half of the students preferred modular-based instruction rather than conducting online classes because of the slow and unreliable internet access in the country. Only 17% of Filipino students have internet access at home. With this, the complete shift to online education is vague for a country that is behind in the digital age. The teachers had no choice but to adapt to the sudden shift in the modes of education. Aside from the lag in the digital age, they also had to make adjustments to the curriculum in a span of months. They also had to make pages of modules, sometimes from scratch, due to the lack of textbooks to supply the millions of students. There also have been a mad scramble for remote resources to support the learning of the 24.6 million students enrolled. So some teachers shoulder their own expenses or personally solicit for the reams of bond papers and bottles of inks used. Teachers in some parts of the country also deliver these modules themselves to the remote areas. There is also much disagreement on the opening of schools, especially its parents, thinking that the risks to children far outweigh the benefits of continuing education. Home learning becomes a heavy burden for parents and guardians who juggle work obligations remotely. Many parents have also been affected by the pandemic and their ability to pay for basic needs, including education, since they lost their job after the implementation of quarantine measures. Furthermore, the parents themselves have to do some learning, studying for months the modules that serve as their children's source of knowledge. Now, imagine those parents from the generations of poverty who are not able to read and write. Along with the shift to this type of learning, students are left with no choice but to self-learn the lessons. Students' workloads are increased every day, and piles of worksheets have to be submitted weekly. To top it off, students have been isolated in their homes for seven months now, and the pressure to finish and understand modules quickly in a not-so-conducive learning environment results in elevated stress. Before COVID-19, many schools were barely coping with meager funding, inadequate facilities, and high enrollment rates. The coronavirus pandemic has caused huge changes in society, and the massive shift of education has caused a wider gap between the rich and the underprivileged. COVID-19 did not create the school woes that are under discussion today, but the virus has made it more urgent to 
to resolve these problems before they further undermine the education of Filipino children.